طيب نعطي لكل الثواني في ناس on the chat can you hear us it's it's not recording now it is I think يا هلا طيب ثواني يا جماعة just give us
مرحبا جميعا اهلا وسهلا فيكم ويلكم ايفرون ويل بي سبيكينج ان انجلش ديورينج اكشلي وي ميكسينج عربي ان انجلش بس مينلي بيكوز اوف اور اودينس وي ويل شيفت كومبليتلي فروم ناو اون تو انجلش ويلكم تو ذا فيرست ايساك سبيكر سيشنز وي ويل اي ام ويز يو توداي لؤي ملاحمي ام ذا جنرال مانجر اوف ذا سكول اوف ايساك ويز عبد العزيز الغرير سكول اوف ادفانس كومبيوتينج وي هاف سيف الشياب اور اوبريشنز مانجر اند ميرا حماتي اولسو اور هيد اوف كوميونيكيشنز And we have a special guest today. Our first uh, ASAC uh, speaker sessions is titled "The Need for Builders: Why Jobs Needed Bosnia." Uh, at the beginning, I want uh, just to discuss a couple of things before we head with this amazing session. We want to welcome also Tam B Jaloka, the CEO and co-founder of Our Propeller, our guest speaker. Uh, a little bit uh, about Tam B. Tam B. He is the co-founder of Propeller Inc. It's a regional. venture capital firm started his career as a software engineer but due to his love of creating customer facing software went into user experience product management and leading teams uh, founded and led several technology startups building teams and product that deliver tangible values to the customers so uh, welcome uh, tambi we're so glad to have you in our first session Uh, we'll uh, we'll leave the mic for you just to start in a bit. Before we start, uh, we have just a few rules. We need everyone to stick to it. Make sure that you're comfortable. Uh, in a, you're sitting in a quiet place to make the most out of the session. We will open the floor for questions during the Q and A sessions. Uh, we want to make sure. Also, please make sure the questions are clear and concise. You can write them in the uh, in the chat button or, or the Q and A uh, in the in the the banner of of the Zoom webinar. Provide your inputs for our question. We'll be as, as sending you some polls questions. We need your answers. And please, at the end uh, of this uh, of the this session, we appreciate your responses to the end of this webinar survey, so we can keep improving our our session. So it's essential for everyone to come to basically participate in this webinar. Do we actually how many people we have? We have 111 today with us. We're super happy. You can uh, safe unmute yourself. I think, and also Tambi. Mira, yes. So we have 111 with us. Great to see everyone in, uh, interest in the session. So, uh, before we begin, how many uh, ASAC students are with us today? Just show us in the in the chat how many people do we have. Ten, eleven, fifteen. Four. Nice, 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 nice. Going up. Going up. But keep sending us, please. Thirty-five awesome, awesome. so far. And if if we don't have others than students, please. If you're, what what is your major? What do you study? And if you're a student at uh, another at LTC, not ASAC, tell us what do you study in the chat button as well. Nice. Can you see it, uh, Mira? Safe. What are people are writing? Not yet. We don't see. Any, I don't see any answers. Yeah. Coding. Coding. No, people in coding. Three one students. So we have people from courses. Perfect. So. Perfect. Mm -hmm. If everyone is ready, we will start in a bit with Tambi. So Tambi, uh, welcome again, buddy. You're Hope welcome. you're well, safe and healthy. Hope everyone is healthy and safe in this crazy uh, <laughs> situation that we're living in. It's been almost a month now. Every one of us is just working remotely, and we wanted the people to keep engaged in, 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 in uh, what we're doing. And I think being a software engineer is is, is a blessing sometimes uh, in the such kind of situations because people are. Looking at 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 uh, what's happening and finding solutions, and we see all of these solutions and all of these digital transformation that we, the tools that we're building today is built by these great uh, people who we call builders or software engineers or developers or coders, whatever people call them. So we have actually a, a poll uh, that we want to ask people before we kick off to this session. It's related to your session. So Safe, if you can please uh, share with the first poll question with our audience. Why did you decide to join us? Uh, why did you decide to join this event today? Is it why for knowledge building, for uh, the speakers uh, lineup, or the topic, or did your boss or instructor made you to watch this? Come on, guys! Knowledge 
building. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to see. I think it's still not finished. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's I think in progress. Seventy-four, three percent. Please, everyone, if you can vote, knowledge building. That's great. That's great. I think knowledge building prevail. Awesome, awesome. And the fifteen percent. Sorry that we have uh, your boss or instructor made you, but I'm sure that you'll enjoy the, the, the session today. There are a lot of things that uh, we'll be talking about and we're excited to hear what Tambi has uh, prepared for us. Okay, the second poll, the uh, safe if you can end it. Please, let's end the poll and start with the second one. So, the second one, which operating system or is your favorite, Windows, Mac, or Linux? We're talking about C jobs today. So let's see who are, how many Mac users we have here. Linux, Mac, Windows. So the majority are Windows users here. Let's say around 77%, 18 is Windows, 18% is Mac users, and 9% uh, around Linux. That's good. Which is statistically accurate, if you want to. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So, uh, Tambi, the floor is yours. We're super excited to have you here and welcome on board again. Uh, I'll end, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. You can share yours and. He's got it. Let me do that. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you everyone for joining me today and us. And thanks for ASAC for uh, arranging this amazing event and Luai and Saif, Mira, all the team. Always excited to hear good things from you. And today I'm gonna try to share a bit from uh, my end, uh, if it's interesting. Uh, let me just start my presentation. Do I, can you see Perfect. everything? Perfect. Yes, yes, it's full screen. It's full screen, it's working. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, uh, <clears throat> and after thank you, I would like to tell you a little bit, just a brief about myself. I've started coding actually pretty, I'm, I don't know if it's early, seventh grade, but I was always in love with the software and making things work on the computer. Uh, that's why I studied uh, math in Turkey because uh, to my knowledge at that time, which was 1998, all the great uh, computer scientists studied math. So I went there and uh, studied math in Turkey, but uh, I didn't really com continue. I finished my degree in uh, computer science later on because uh, math wasn't actually as uh, related to computer in these days as much as I thought. So after that, uh, at some point, I worked in a few companies, and then I started my own company at 2008, Binary Interactive. And uh, I did uh, two startups from there. Uh, one was Jobland, was one Simple World. And then in 2016, I co-founded uh, Propeller, which is where I currently work uh, as a co-founder and CEO. It's uh, an investment company out of Jordan. So we invest in uh, technology and software startups. And uh, we, we have uh, 13 companies in our portfolio. And we're always looking for new companies, looking for new in interesting people uh, doing interesting things. And the picture has a mountain bike because my main hobby is mountain biking outside of software development and uh, startups. Cool. I'm the CEO of Propeller. Okay, so usually this is the part where I actually ask people uh, like, do you know who this guy is? Uh, I don't know if you can raise your hand. Uh, just probably everyone can raise their hand. Yes. So you're correct. But I'm not sure. Sorry. I'm not sure if everyone knows who this guy is. Right. So sorry for the lack of interactivity, but uh, yeah, you know, usually I do this 
while facing everyone. So uh, yes, Yanni, not everyone knows uh, Steve Wozniak. So Steve Jobs, everyone knows him. He was one of the two co-founders of uh, Macintosh, uh, or Apple, sorry. Uh, but Steve Wozniak was actually the other half of uh, Apple. He was actually, actually he built the Mac before they started Apple. So Steve Jobs joined uh, Steve Wozniak so they can together uh, promote and start selling uh, the Mac computer, which uh, Steve Wozniak was the first guy to build. So as you might see, they were always in it uh, together, but usually we do not really focus on, uh, or people don't, focus a lot on the other half of uh, Apple, which is Steve Wozniak. Although most of the beautiful things that are within the Mac, at, at least in the, in the 80s and 90s, were thanks to uh, Steve Wozniak as well. But that wasn't uh, what people are uh, seeing because usually visionaries are people who talk more, go out more. Those are the people that we uh, hear about. So. I would like to talk about being visionary. visionary. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. So yes, Steve Jobs was uh, the visionary that actually saw what Apple can be. Steve Wozniak maybe was not, but he was actually the heart of uh, Apple as well. So, sorry, I'm not seeing the chat. Is anyone writing anything on the chat that I should be? We, we, we're looking at it as well, I think. Okay, so if there's yeah. anything... In the Everyone chat, is interacting. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know. If there's a question, yeah, please just... Uh, of course, of course. So. Please, guys, just one quick... If, if I may, uh, there's a Q&A part. You can ask your questions there as well, guys. You can write your question in the Q&A button and in order just uh, to, to answer it before, once uh, Tam B finishes. Uh, presentation. Okay. So I know my talk and it is uh, mostly about discussing the issue of uh, where do most founders come from? So we all know the big startups in the world, but do we really know like where do, where do the founders come from? Business or programming? I would like to do a poll. I'm not sure, uh, like maybe we can do it on chat. If you can just write your opinion. Let's do like, a quick poll. We can I could do one if you want. What, what is the question? The, uh, safe card, write it immediately, right safe? It's the question on the screen, like where do most yeah. founders come from, business or programming? I think it's... Uh, don't give them any uh, hints, do I? Yeah. I'm not giving anything. <laughs> Sh should we wait for it or uh, people are writing on chat, by the way. We can, if you want to take it in general, the writing on chat, but we can have an accurate one from the polls if you want safe just to launch it as a poll. Mm -hmm. Where is the poll? Here is it. So we just launched the poll. Where do most founders come from? Business, programming. percent 70 okay can do it come on there's okay another 20 percent still didn't vote it's it's easier here to lift your hand or <laughs> okay everyone so business uh, wins 60 40 okay cool thanks for the show of hands let me just continue here so I would like to look deeper at that uh, assumption. So it's an assumption from everyone, which is understandable. But everyone knows uh, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. I'm sure you know him. Mark Zuckerberg is uh, actually a programmer. So he's actually on the te technical side. He's, uh, the, he was a programmer. He wrote the first version of uh, Facebook, joined by his uh, fellow housemates or roommates, people who used to work with him, and that's how they launched uh, Facebook. And he's currently still the CEO. So we're going to move on. Microsoft. So Bill Gates is actually a programmer. He's also the CEO. He was the CEO of uh, Microsoft for a long time. Then came uh, Steve Ballmer and then Satya and others. 
whom I think most of them are also, I'm, I'm not sure about Balmer, but Satya was uh, in the beginning a software engineer. So Bill Gates was also a software engineer. Netflix, I'm sure everyone knows Netflix. So the founder of Netflix, Reed Hastings, was, and he says that he still writes code. So he's also a software engineer, by the way. Larry Ellison, I'm sure everyone knows Oracle. It's like the, one of the most used the databases paid at least, not the open source ones. Also a software engineer. Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were software engineers as well. Uh, the founder of Y Combinator, I'm not sure if everyone knows Y Combinator, it's like one of the best uh, uh, accelerators in the world. Actually, they started the whole hype of acceleration in 2005-2006 and uh, he's uh, also a programmer and he just recently released a new language. So he's even still active. I think he's 57 or something right now. Jack Dorsey, the co-founder of uh, Twitter and then later also the founder of uh, Square, which is also a very big company, also technical, also started in programming. So if you, if you notice, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that this is uh, across the board, of course, but these companies, yeah, Twitter, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, like Oracle, all of these, uh, Netflix, all of these companies, which are huge companies, were actually started by software engineers, which is something that people don't uh, assume. Like usually people assume, oh, by the way, most of the time when I ask this question, heavily it's tilted towards uh, business people. Like business people start, uh, let's say, uh, startups or successful startups, which is not, you know, the data does not really align with that, by the way. So you know, here I am trying to show you that using looking at the data of startups technology startups that have been grown over the last 20 years mostly are technical versus the business uh, business people so why is that well i would like to talk about uh, that a little bit uh, startup founders that don't know how to build their product have a very hard time so imagine like in the first big uh, first days if uh, Mark Zuckerberg, instead of actually when he got the idea, instead of going and starting to develop it on his own, he had to go and start fundraising, start uh, to look for people to build. He didn't do that. He just started doing it. And then people who, they were also programmers, uh, I think, to my knowledge, they started joining him. And at some point, other people like Sean, uh, Sean Parker and others started uh, joining him as well. But at the beginning, he could actually start building his uh, startup uh, by himself. So usually, just like I mentioned, startups use, uh, lose a lot of time if they uh, lose their building capability. Cool. So, yeah, I don't know if we established that, but uh, I was trying to establish that programmers are actually pretty good at starting startups as well, just like uh, any other person. Uh, so how do we actually become better builders? Because uh, the difference between a programmer and, or for me at least when I say a builder, uh, you build something, ship it, people uh, use it. They, for example, if it's the same analogy, if you build a house, people live in it. So that's why I use uh, the word builder more than a programmer. Because you can be a builder in other uh, aspects as well. But when a program is a builder, this is where I believe uh, uh, you can become better. You can actually build faster, build better, and you can build more stuff. Um, sorry. Build better. You can build more stuff. Okay, so how do you become actually better and moving, like I said, faster and better and build more stuff? You can acquire new tools. You can uh, learn to use things like GitHub, which is a tool. You can learn to use uh, design patterns and programming, which are also tools for you to solve certain problems. Uh, you can learn the basics of usability. These give you the ability to create somehow working applications without requiring UX expertise or without requiring uh, product managers. 
so you can actually deliver something, ship it, and people can start using it uh, faster, I would say. You can uh, develop some customer understanding, like because building more, more than program, because you can build, because you can do like the most amazing uh, algorithm, but if it's not usable or it doesn't have the right interface for people to use, people will not use it. They will not know what's uh, uh, under the hood, as they say. So that's why I believe that understanding the customer as well is really important as a tool. So you should also, uh, in my opinion, sharpen your tools. You can do that by actually being involved in community projects. We've been seeing this, by the way, uh, a lot during to the COVID-19 uh, issue, where a lot of people are actually building things. They're joining the community projects, sorry, and uh, contributing. So it's not only startups that they can, also students, also anyone who uh, has the ability to build something, you can from, the, from your home, and it's not very costly as well. You can join open source projects. Uh, um, again, I, I would have loved uh, to see more open source contribution from uh, our region, but uh, I think that we can start. Uh, we're never too late. So uh, you can join an open source project, even if you don't, uh, any, you can join them as a team member, maybe start with uh, doing uh, translation or something. But just funny enough, when I was in Turkey in 1999, I was working, uh, we actually worked on Mozilla, Tur uh, Turkish, uh, like uh, localizing Mozilla into Turkish. And I remember I wrote a C++ uh, software that, uh, not software, yeah, program that uh, takes an XML list and uh, helps people uh, translate. So they would open the application, it would ask them word by word, because there were like localization strings and you have to put the one in Turkish. So multiple people sitting in the, I think we were incubated within another uh, company in Turkey, and they would just sit and uh, the application asks them the word and they write the other one. It's a very silly application, but we were contributing to Mozilla and it, it felt amazing actually. Code katas. So another way to sharpen your uh, tools is to do code katas. Uh, a kata is like uh, in martial arts, I think, uh, I'm not sure if it's karate or uh, you can do, it's like a set of uh, motions that you do to practice. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen them, when you want to get another uh, belt, you, are, you actually, uh, you have to perform a certain kata. So uh, the same is uh, available in programming, by the way. So there are uh, websites, uh, if you search for code kata, there are websites where you can find examples, uh, scenarios, scenarios that Maybe in your company, you're not gonna see, but uh, people put them. It feels like exercises, but it's not uh, for the sake of learning. It's more for, for the sake of sharpening your uh, skills in programming. So it's also something that uh, I advise people to try. And also hackathons. Hackathons are an amazing experience, an amazing uh, uh, way to, uh, uh, really uh, try to come up with a solution. So it's not only about programming. There are programming competitions which are amazing as well, but hackathons because you have to program and you have to think about the customer, the problem, you have to make something work, and usually it's within one or two days. Uh, and it's also an, an amazing place to sharpen your skills. I'm actually really excited about joining in. I'm, I'm actually, I am actually looking for a hackathon to join, but uh, let's see when there's one. I want to join it with my team as well in Propeller, just to keep our brains uh, working uh, at that uh, level of building a, a uh, solution using programming. So another uh, important thing to become a builder is to know what good looks like, because uh, what do I mean by that? If, you're, if you want to evaluate something, if you want to know that you are actually doing something good that customers will enjoy, and uh, people will get excited to use, you need to know what good looks like. Because, uh, you know, I'm not sure about the Arabic proverb, but uh, someone who wouldn't see something even if it was in front of him, you don't want to be that person. You want to be the person who knows, yes, this is good, this is bad. Uh, I wish you could have made it smaller, bigger. It's, it's okay to have an opinion about uh, products, about software, about 
designs, things uh, like that, because it helps you while you're building, uh, rely less on people, because really the whole essence of having uh, someone good as a builder by themselves is to, uh, sorry, something came up, yeah, uh, is to, to know how to build it as long as possible by yourself. Look at other products and uh, look at products, uh, product hunt uh, in specific. So product hunt, uh, product hunt .com, It's a website where they people promote their products. So any new product that comes, they promote it there. People start writing about it, giving it uh, reviews, I would say, and then it gets promoted. So always, oh yeah, I always open product hunt and look at what are people building. So it, it helps me even in my uh, career. It helps me in uh, understanding what good looks like today, not to be outdated. And it helps me understand if any startup comes and talks to me, I, I, I would probably have seen it last year, one year before, a few months ago. It really helps to look at product funds. And uh, learn to critique. So when I say learn to critique, it's not that learn how to it's not about bashing people. It's more about critique, like someone asking you, like, what do you think about my uh, mobile application? Learn the, uh, the etiquette of how to actually tell them, find, uh, find ways where it can be better without actually uh, hurting their feelings and without actually making them uh, not take your feedback. Because uh, the way you say it is the difference between it actually becoming uh, the difference between them actually enhancing their product or coming from here and going from the other way, like not hearing it. Read books about building things. Yes, I'm a passionate book reader or, uh, oh, by the way, it doesn't have to be books. Books are amazing, but uh, it can also be articles. It can also be uh, Udemy tutorials, but uh, it should be uh, like deep readings, like read about, for example, there's a book, it's called uh, Don Norman's uh, The Design of Everyday Things. It's a book about the design, like why is a door, door handle the way it is? Uh, why are the buttons on the elevator the way they are? Very interesting uh, topics that help you uh, understand how to make better uh, products, uh, which is uh, better software. So I really believe that you can build the next great company any one of us, there's literally uh, nothing stopping you. And uh, if funding is stopping you, please talk to us. And if the internet is there, the knowledge is there, um, you can work on yourself. If you're not ready yet, it's okay. No one is, uh, yani, it doesn't have to be this year, uh, but I'm, I'm not always a proponent of like, just leave everything and go and open a company. Once you find an interesting problem and you really think about it, that is the right time to actually tackle that problem in your life. So it doesn't need to be at 22, 25, 30. Actually, the average age of uh, solid founders, I would say, successful founders, is uh, 40 something, 43 maybe. That's the average age. So uh, don't feel rushed into it, but uh, prepare yourself to become a builder using the right tools, sharpening your uh, tools, and uh, trying to uh, gain knowledge of other uh, from other people that build great uh, products and companies you just need the right partners okay th this is a really good uh, point so even if you're not a technical uh, co-founder or someone who's uh, who had the technical knowledge i urge people to partner up with people who can actually build because it would really make your life uh, easier because a startup is really hard uh, you have so many things from the market from the competitors at least you want your founders to be a solid uh, group of people who can actually build the, the product themselves. Yes, so. Sorry, Tambi, I think we lost your voice. Sorry, um, Tambi. Still? Hello? Hello. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So well, I would urge everyone to start their own uh, startup or join one or build a product it doesn't even need to look like a startup uh, at the beginning some some products by the way they weren't uh, startups mozilla for example was actually a project uh, let's someone wanted to build a browser and then it became a company and then they got funding and now it's it's a company that does uh, firefox by the way if everyone knows 
and you can learn how to run a business, which I know it sounds uh, weird, but you can actually learn how to do that. It's really harder to build great products. Yeah, that is the thing that everyone misses more than looking at the financials and uh, doing the mechanical things that are normal. But building products that people love, that is uh, the hardest thing. So I think all of these are great products and they were really hard to build, uh, hard to put in the hands of people, but the only way it was possible because it had a great uh, group of programmers, technical people, product managers, UX, you name them, a lot of builders. Uh, that's it from me. If you can yeah, uh, take it uh, forward, I, I would urge everyone to just go and build great stuff. Thank, Thank you, you Tambi. Thank you so much for, for the great, uh, inspiring and informative session. I, I actually got excited again because I, I come from that world of building uh, products with a great technical uh, uh, co-founders. Uh, I come from the business side, but I also believe always with the value of, of having a technical co-founder that shares the same passion and technicalities and, and which uh, is great to, to hear about all of the I actually didn't know that the founder of Netflix was also a software programmer that's a great I, I learned a lot today so thank you so much uh, on sharing all of these great uh, tips and, and uh, inspiring uh, informations for our students and for our team before I want to urge everyone please if you want to ask questions now is the time so you can Put your questions uh, and Mira can choose the, the questions for us in the Q&A button. So if you go down to the bar, you'll find the Q&A, uh, basically sample, just write your question there or you can write them in the chat box if you want. Uh, Tambi, before, until we have a couple of questions that Mira can uh, uh, basically share with us, uh, use, I want to ask you something about the the, uh, the pros and cons of joining a startup versus joining a company like a lot of established companies or big companies now because we have a lot of hundreds of students that will graduate in the coming uh, basically months uh, they will have to choose between they start applying some of them already applying for bigger companies some of them are applying for startups if you can share with us what is what, why should I apply here or there what exactly should I be looking for uh, if I want to build uh, I learn how to be a good builder, as I said. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, honestly, both of them are good options. Uh, I'm sure if you join a good large company, it's it's going to be a fruitful experience. Uh, and also joining a startup, a small startup. But uh, it's it, it's different. It depends on your uh, goals. Like, are you looking to build your career for the next few years, or are you looking to actually start uh, gaining uh, like uh, I would say uh, fulfilling your destiny, I would say, like when you join a startup, because when you join a startup early on, and especially if you get to be one of the co-founders or one of the earliest team, you get to change the world in a different way. And you, your voice is, your contribution is different. Uh, not that it's not very, uh, if you join, for example, Microsoft, you will contribute to the world, but you will, uh, your decisions are very minimal. You can't really steer uh, your uh, your destiny or the outcome of the company. It's, it's very minimal uh, effect. But when you join a startup, you can actually learn to satisfy the customers uh, yourself, like or be uh, engaged in multiple levels of the product uh, development lifecycle if, if it's a startup. Because you is it good for the career path, for example, like you are an investor we, where you basically had a lot of companies and people applying to you mm -hmm. uh, and pitching their products. Yeah. Uh, when you look at, and I know one thing that's very important for, for investors is the first thing that they look at before also the product is the team behind this product. Their background, their passion, their technicality, the way that they answer these products, then, then they look at the idea. I don't know if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like also the team, so the, the, when people start deciding about their career path, is it, does it make a really good, dif a big difference of being part of a startup before building something or being part of a bigger company for coming and start thinking about building a product? So it depends on the person uh, or it depends on uh, the company that they're working in. So if they were working in a good company that is uh, innovative, that is, uh, a learning place for uh, its uh, 
uh, employees, then yes, I would actually look at it as a positive thing. So if, a, for example, let's take scenarios. If a founder now joined uh, Google a few years ago and then comes now and opens a startup, that is a positive thing for us because we believe that they actually worked at scale. They worked with a company that understand what a good product looks like. They were put under pressure. It's a different kind of pressure than startup. It's more of a pressure to, um, you know, work within a bigger team, work globally, do calls with uh, colleagues across the world. So it, it gives you that perspective. So I would say that it's a good thing, actually. I mean, it's, we look at those people a different way than we would look at someone who just graduated and opened a startup. So I, I would encourage people usually to join a great company before opening a startup. It's not always the case, by the way. So the Stripe guys, for example, which I actually forgot to put uh, the Collison brothers. There are actually two brothers, one of them programmer and one a different field. Uh, they started Stripe uh, exactly out of the university. And Stripe is now a $26 billion uh, company or something. So uh, well, it happened, or Mark Zuckerberg, sometimes it happens. But uh, we only talk about it when it succeeds, right? So I can't really say that it's in a systematic way everyone should just quit and open startups because Facebook, Stripe are like one in, or two, three from seven billion people. Right, so the, the the odds are not uh, that good. I would actually uh, urge people to join really great uh, companies or startups, depending on the startup, of course. You know, if it's a good startup that uh, treats its employees well, that is a learning place, then uh, you sh you can join it. But I wouldn't recommend people to quit and start their companies. I would at least. Uh, two to four years of working in a, a company would would actually make more sense. Thank you. Thanks so much. I think we have a lot of questions. We have around eleven questions, so maybe we can answer. Hopefully, we can answer a few. We have around uh, okay. twenty minutes, uh, so uh, please, Mira, if you can give us one of the questions to start with. Yes. So we have a question from uh, Fuad Badr. He's asking. What about people who don't want to start a company but want to be part of a successful company and become useful members in the society? Do you have any advice for these people? So I think that's uh, what we were just talking about, which is uh, just join uh, just join a company and do your best because if you join a company and do your best, it will help you later on if you want to open up your own business or not. It, uh, it's not a, that's what I was talking about. It's not mandatory, by the way. You can actually uh, do amazing by just joining someone. So uh, this uh, thing, but there's uh, something uh, which we should always uh, be careful. Like you don't want to always want to be the boss, and that's why you open your own startup. That's something that is not really. Um, I wouldn't say it's a good approach to starting your own business. You should find a problem, something, and you should have an initial thinking like I can solve this for the world, and then start your startup versus thinking like I want to work on my own and then trying to figure out uh, a startup. So uh, work with the, a company for as long as you need until you get that great idea and then start your own startup. Okay, thank you. There's another question from Anonymous, an anonymous attendee asking, uh, when you started working on Propeller, did you expect it to be successful? What was it or was it unexpected? Were you surprised by the outcome? Um, so, and honestly, I uh, of course you don't expect it to be successful. You you expect like it's always, uh, you know, you're always uh, afraid that it might fail, that something might happen, and it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna go in the right direction. But you should always be hopeful uh, and trust your team, yourself, and your skills, by the way. So it's not, uh, it's, it's not, uh, I mean, you can do a lot to tilt the odds in your favor. But of course, there's always the odds of uh, failing. And failing is, uh, is normal. It's not good. I wouldn't say that failing is good. But I would say that failing is normal because uh, you can't have all the companies succeed, right? If a company wins, then the other company probably lost its market share. So that's life and it's part of life. And uh, 
what I would say is that even uh, that we are afraid every day, and everyone is uh, afraid, like, will my company succeed? But uh, have the confidence and just do it if you have the right skills and uh, the right uh, attitude. That's really insightful. Thank you. Um, uh, we have an interesting question from Nidal Arikat, who's asking, what about the change in the career path for people who are studying in different fields and uh, are considering programming and software? What do you think about shifting career paths completely to programming and software? I think this might be a student from another school in LTU. Okay, so two. I would uh, definitely encourage that. By the way, a lot of good programmers and uh, in great companies such as Airbnb, Facebook, uh, lots of other ones, even one, one guy in one of our companies, an amazing programmer with a very brilliant mind, he actually studied uh, English literature, Adab Inglisi, and uh, now he's really doing well, and I love the way he thinks about programming, although he, he didn't st study it in university, but he, st he worked on himself, and he took courses, he did uh, things to better himself, but I would definitely encourage that. And actually, a lot of people who work in software engineering are also from graphic design, in Facebook at least. Uh, those people have multiple dimensions. So they started maybe a few years and then they shifted. That gave them a different perspective, by the way. Sometimes might be better than someone who just started uh, directly with uh, software engineering. So even in university, by the way, right now, if I would uh, go and tell myself uh, other stuff, I would actually take that accounting uh, lesson, which I didn't uh, take in university. It would have helped me uh, a few years ago. Uh, I thought that it was boring, but apparently I needed to take it for the, just one lesson, not to change the whole career, uh, the whole uh, university. I hope that answers that. So I would definitely encourage it. Interesting for all of our um, other students from other schools in LTC, they can consider after all shifting their career if they find this topic interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question I'm from Hannah uh, Maratouk. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you please advise regarding the importance of systematic work and rough processes in startups? Unfortunately, startup is a bit misunderstood in our culture, along with entrepreneurship firm. So um, I think I understand, uh, if I, and if I understood correctly, uh, maybe Hannah means that uh, some startups don't believe in uh, building things the correct way or having a system in place or having a process in place because uh, they believe that they should move very fast and break things, which makes sense at uh, some point in time. But uh, just like Facebook learned, uh, I don't say the hard way, but they learned like move fast with stable grounds so the earlier you start actually creating uh, i don't want to say when i say process i don't mean a process where it's the same process as uh, a very large corporate uh, corp corporation with thirty thousand uh, employees but having some uh, quality in things uh, for example if you're doing programming put unit tests no one will uh, it's the opposite actually if you have a little bit of, uh, so for example, this is something that I discussed a lot, like what, should startups write unit tests? Yes, they should. Because when they want to actually change, when they want to actually start introducing new things, for example, unit tests will actually help them to move faster than the other company who didn't uh, write code in the proper way and they were really slow in changes or every time they change something, something breaks. So having some sort of uh, systematic way and process is good. Also knowing when to uh, and what are the areas you should focus on. So it would be the core areas. I wouldn't focus on everything. If I was, for example, doing a startup, I wouldn't focus on unit testing, if everyone knows what unit testing means, uh, the login screen like or the reset password. But I would do the core uh, part, which is in the middle. And whatever, if I'm doing accounting, I would try not to screw up the numbers because in a few months when I start selling my uh, software, I'm going to lose so many customers because I miscalculated something, for example. And, and that should never happen, sadly, because you lose a customer, they don't come back. But if someone can't reset their uh, password, it's okay. They call you, you reset it manually. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, I think. If I may, Mira, I have I have a question for Tammy. Just maybe more. Uh, if you can shed a light or or, or uh, just tell people our, our audience more about Propeller's portfolio. Uh, the, the what type of startups that you invest in? Maybe if you can tell us a little bit of who are the startups that you how they started. This maybe if you can share a story about uh, one of your startups, it would be great as well. Like from technical how they started and where they are today. Okay, so uh, I will talk about the earlier uh, ones. Uh, for example, uh, PS Rocket. So PS Rocket was started by an ex employee who was a second time entrepreneur, Zaid Husban. Uh, I love the guy. He's uh, Started the iFood before, right? The company that they were acquired. Exactly. Sold. He sold his uh, prior uh, startup iFood to uh, Yemek Sepeti, which is a Turkish subsidiary of uh, Rocket Internet uh, Delivery Hero, I think. Delivery Hero, which, sorry. which is probably yeah, owned by Rocket Internet. So, uh, yeah, uh, Zaid was, uh, uh, we met him in the beginning, we started uh, helping him in the beginning. We joined him. Uh, invested, uh, yani my co-founder uh, Zaid invested uh, some cash and then we started helping him as propeller uh, more on the product side we started uh, we helped him launch the product actually we didn't build it for him by the way it was only consultation plus um, you know being there as a product manager as a CTO or as a just uh, strategic uh, uh, person we helped him uh, launch the product in two months, which was uh, really good because he started validating as uh, fast as possible. Because usually you should be building your products as fast as possible. But at the same time, it, uh, he didn't throw anything away. So uh, because it was both built fast, but built on solid grounds, I would say, we didn't have to throw everything away after three months. And after six months, we just kept on evolving the system. Of course, at some point, there will come a part where you will need to rewrite stuff, but uh, he didn't have to do it uh, very fast. Because sometimes, you know, you do a startup, you get a few customers, and then you can't do any changes. That's where you start losing customers, the, the customers that you thought you had. They would start churning. So uh, that was uh, three and a half years ago. It was a really good uh, experience, and it's, alhamdulillah, it's one of uh, the best companies we have. Not, in, uh, I would say, the biggest, not the best. Uh, all of them are great companies. And the second company I would talk about, which is uh, Arabot. Arabot is uh, uh, Dr. Qais Hassan and Abdullah Fazah. They're, uh, they're doing customer experience through conversational AI. So it's, uh, which, is, which looks like a chatbot, but it's more than a chatbot. So they're doing actually, uh, uh, if anyone uses uh, Aramex to order anything, especially now in this uh, crisis, uh, it's actually a chatbot that asks you when do you want the delivery, what time would you like it, and if you share the location, it would uh, take it, note it, add it to the actual uh, shippable item, and then um, someone would call you, and uh, they would call you when they arrive. So it really minimizes the effort that uh, Aramex employees used to make when they call you and ask you everything on the phone. And it also allows it to work 24-7 because you, you have like a chatbot working for you all the time. So there were, uh, the, yeah, both of these companies are software companies. And most of our portfolio, if you think about it, uh, we have another company called Nestrum. We have a company called Dirk in uh, Dubai. We have uh, Basit uh, recently joined. They also do AI, status AI. All of them, or most of them, are software companies because uh, that's what we understand and that's what we uh, believe that is a scalable uh, business and it's a product driven business i would say more than traditional businesses so uh, that's the area that we focus on and most of our companies are software companies i hope that answers your question yeah thank you so much also i want to just to point out something related there is nidal Arikat is asking i heard that there are a large need for programmers uh, and the current worker cannot cover that. In other words, there is a huge demand. Is that true? Is that, yeah, he's asking about the demand for software engineers. Is it true? It's so true. Yeah, it, it's truer than ever. So I don't know what's going to happen due to Corona, but I think all employment is going to be hit. But at some point when it goes back, uh, you know what I mean? Like the, the average is going to be lowered for all industries. 
But consider if you put it uh, into comparison, uh, software development jobs are so much more in need. Anyone who tells me that, I doubt that, uh, not I doubt, but it's rarely to find a software engineer that can't find a job, uh, rarely. And by the way, I see that uh, even when I talk to people in other uh, industries, when they hear about, I don't want to say uh, salaries, but the perks of uh, someone when they're a software engineer, they're like, whoa, I, I should have studied uh, to become a software engineer, maybe. And yes, that is the time, because if you can see software is eating the world, we're using Zoom, and we're going to write on Slack, and then we're going to write messages on WhatsApp, and then we're, I'm not saying it's the most important thing, but it's it's becoming a really major force in the world, software. And uh, that's why there's demand always. So just to make sure, guys, like everyone is attending, don't worry about your jobs. Each one of you here will have a chance. <laughs> the demand is still huge. Don't worry about it. Any other and questions? Mira? Yeah. That's really cool. Mira, any other questions? Maybe we have room for uh, yeah, two three questions. I think it's, uh... More questions. Uh, someone, I think this was answered in the presentation. Uh, Mushid is asking, how can I develop myself in programming? What are the ways? Maybe we can be a, give him um, a summary. Uh, I think we answered that if there is anything else that's uh, more uh, outside the. the, uh, the There's topic, a question the from, I think, our colleague Saad Malhaf is asking. Do you think one programmer alone can create a professional mobile application without a team? Um, it's, it's, it's doable, but it's, it's hard. Yani, but to start with, yes, you can. And you just to, uh, it depends on what you're uh, building. But of course, if you find the people to work with you, it becomes much, much easier, the success uh, rate. So, if, uh, I would always encourage people who are working on something to go and look for other people. Uh, especially, by the way, if you think about it, in our region, we are people who are social. So we know people, we know friends, we know cousins. Uh, I would say maybe in other regions like the uh, Europe or something, people are more closed off, right? But here we do have, uh, everyone has a circle. So talk, to, uh, talk with your circle. Don't, clo uh, don't hide your idea. If it's an idea that's simple enough to be stolen, I wouldn't pursue that idea if you just told someone about it and they took it. But uh, go talk to people, find other people. Although it is doable, it's much harder. And for the long term, so you can uh, sustain your company and actually make something out of yourself or out of the business, I would uh, encourage you to find uh, co-founders. I think we can take one more question. Yeah, yeah. yeah let me check. There, there's a question, Mira, if I may. Yeah. I wanted to highlight. Uh, I think I missed it. What do you do? Think about Grisha. Uh, I think there was a question about working and studying at the same time. Uh, some of the people we have a lot of people. Uh, also, we will open night classes for upskilling. Mm -hmm. How how can is it how can they manage basically the idea of working and studying? So what about starting a little project while you're studying or while you're working at something else? Do you recommend that or do what exactly uh, the tips that we can give us? I actually do recommend that. So uh, can I give just uh, two examples? So first of all, I want to uh, explain uh, how hard it was to study and work uh, before or learn. So uh, when I when I started studying math and I used to study math and at the same time uh, learn programming. I used to actually go to an internet place. There were places where you found internet. There, there weren't internet at home uh, a lot. And actually take my USB stick and download tutorials as HTML files and then go back home later at night until morning, study them because uh, there wasn't any internet. It wasn't accessible. So it was much harder. I'm just giving that just to compare it with the world right now where we are actually talking like around 150 people are all having a conversation online from our homes which was impossible just this is a, you know, 20 years ago i'm not i'm not from the 60s i'm from the 90s it's not even that old so uh, yeah uh, that was about uh, like learning how hard it is and in university uh, yes Learning and working. So in university, I used to work at, uh, as well. Uh, maybe it 
it wasn't, I don't know if it was good or not. I used to work uh, night shifts uh, uh, doing programming and then go to university early morning at 7, 8. Uh, sometimes, which uh, the bad part here comes. A few times I used to sleep at class, but uh, my, my professors knew what I was doing. And that's why they were like, they would just tell me, like, Tambi, please go wash your face and come back. And I wasn't uh, thrown out of any class. I wouldn't say that's the best thing, but uh, that also helped me be more resilient, learn faster. And actually, after university, after we finished university, I had so much more experience than the other people around me, which really helped me. Uh, instead of other people who didn't uh, work or take freelance jobs or do any side projects, who uh, started exactly after university started, right? I had two or three years of uh, actual work experience during university. I don't know if that makes sense. I wouldn't say it's a good advice. I would just say you know, uh, learn during university and also learn how to do professional work because being a professional uh, software engineer is very important as well. It's not only the algorithms, it's not only the computer science uh, part, it's also how, how do you deal, how do you deliver on time, how do you use GitHub, for example, now, uh, in our days it was SVN. So uh, those other uh, skills as well are really important, like how to become a professional, a professional actually in, in any area in life. So don't forget that, because if you are the best programmer in the world and you don't know how to communicate or deliver uh, things, I don't think you're gonna move uh, a lot in the world. I hope it wasn't too long. Do I no, 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 it was great, thank you so much. I think maybe there is a comment here that uh, from Hamza Tamari, but I want to uh, maybe because it's a pessimistic comment, but I like such kind of comments. And I the idea is before we talk about all of this, we should talk about the case of what if your country kills your talent? I think uh, sometimes we, we need to highlight a lot. You need to, to read more about, about what's happening here. But Tambi, I would love if you can talk about the available opportunities for, for, for the people today. What, what type of opportunities that were not available maybe five years and what type of opportunities that are available today? It's not just about and why, why we shouldn't always blame it on the country. Why you should always blame it on yourself sometimes. Uh, when we need to talk about uh, such kind of scenarios. So uh, what's your answer for that? So I, I agree with you, Lui, by the way, and, uh, on something that we tend to uh, uh, always blame the environment around us, regardless, whether it's Jordan, whether it's a different country, whether it's uh, Brazil, for example. Uh, and if you're in a different country as well, you can see that they kill your talent. But I would say that people around you sometimes they do try to kill your talent, but you should go beyond that. You should not look around you. You should aspire to be, uh, I don't want to say yeah, something more, because same as uh, Brazil, uh, why did I mention Brazil? All the good football players come from Brazil, which is a very uh, poor country with very bad politics. With uh, It's much, it's, I would say it's worse than Jordan as a country, a lot. But Jordan is doing tremendous leaps and always has been actually in technology in this area specifically. Uh, we have been pumping uh, entrepreneurs and uh, software engineers and uh, technical people into the whole region, which uh, just uh, last time I went to Jitex, every time I go to, uh, I went to Dell, I meet a Jordanian. I go to Oracle, I meet a Jordanian, Amazon, Kaza. So we, we have the talents, and the country is doing a lot for us. Sometimes I don't believe that the country is uh, killing you, uh, or killing your uh, enthusiasm, talent. talent, or something. I think that our country is a country just like any other country. Some of them are even in worse shapes, and they have a lot of great companies. By the way, WhatsApp came out of Ukraine, and Ukraine is also very... Uh, Economically, they're doing very bad. It's a conflict say. region as well. Exactly, and uh, they are still uh, producing things. So, no, I believe that the country is moving in a good direction. We have, uh, like, the new ministry. We have a uh, new direction. We have the ISSF uh, fund. We have uh, the VCs are increasing. Before, we didn't have a lot of VCs, right? Now we have Oasis 500. We have Propeller. We have uh, Flat6 Labs might open. Other uh, like uh, early stage VCs are opening, which would uh, help you in growing your idea. 
So I think it's getting better. Thank you, Tambi. And with that uh, final comment, I really want to uh, appreciate your time and the, the uh, amazing and, and uh, informative presentation and answering all of these questions. And it's so important for us and the students to, to be inspired and to know that there are a lot of available opportunities. And as you see here, if all of our attendees, like Tambi is, is a co-founder of uh, Propeller Inc., which is also an accelerator and an incubator for, for multiple great products that are being launched by Jordanians and other people around the region. And they, 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 are, the, your future, you can, they are the future uh, uh, for you as well. You can work with them. You can apply to them. Hopefully, we'll see all of you coming up with great products and ideas and apply to Propeller, which is uh, also, I think, Tambi, that's what the, the region, the country is looking for. And uh, if anyone also uh, wants to know more, you can go to their website. We will share with you the details. You can look at their portfolio and see also the, how, they, how they get applications and what type of products, what type of people. And we actually shared the Propeller is one of our strategic partners. So all of our graduates, once they graduate, we share your uh, portfolio CVs with their, uh, with their portfolio. So uh, I think, uh, Tambi, again, uh, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate making the time for, for, for us and uh, for being our first uh, ASAC speaker uh, in the ASAC speaker sessions, which will be weekly. Uh, so all of our attendees will each week will be having uh, great people such as Tambi to come and share with us the, uh, these kind of amazing information in order to understand what's happening outside of our campus as well and what's happening around the technologies, latest trends and so on. So please, if anyone, Mira will share with you the, the survey link uh, and uh, please make sure to, because we want to hear your feedback and know, in order to improve and to know what to add uh, to, to our speaker sessions in the future. If you needed anything, any comments, if you want also the details of Propeller, we can share it with you. And uh, thank you all uh, for, for your time. Tambi, again, thank you so much. If there's any last words that you want to say before ending the sessions. I would like to thank uh, Isaac, thank you all the team, and thank everyone for giving me one hour of your time to share this with you. I'm looking forward to meet you all in face one day. Uh, now you're just numbers on the chat, but hopefully in the, in the, in the campus, definitely. Exactly. So uh, everyone take care and be safe in these times and see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mira, you shared already the link, right? Uh, hello. After the this session, uh, you received the news. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yatikum al-Afiyah.